Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the second installment in the C programming tutorial series. Today, we're going to be talking about something called arrays, possibly some character sequence, and maybe a little bit of pointers. Um, getting us ready to talking about dynamic memory in episode three. So, first thing I want to do is I'll create a project folder for today. I will just call this, I'll call it array. Go to there and I will make main.c and I will navigate my text editor to there. Perfect. Boom. All right. So first things first, I'm going to include scdio so I can print and receive data and I'm going to make my entry point. Perfect. And I'm going to put my return zero at the bottom because of course at the bottom, we got to remember to exit. All right. So you guys are used to an int like a or we'll say it num instead of equal to six that is a single variable now what if you had a variable that could store multiple different numbers in it it's like this so int num these brackets four will allow me to have multiple different numbers contained within this array of integers so then I can set num zero to five. I can set num one to four and so on until, you know, I hit num three, you know, because I allocated four spaces, but that would be, I could only use num spaces zero to three, right? Um, because we always start at index zero. So I can go num two equals four num three equals five. Perfect. So this is how you store multiple numbers. So like if I were to do a printf statement, I can say, um, I don't know, let's say, let's do percent D plus percent D equals percent D. Perfect. And then I can go like num three and then I can go like num one and if I were to go over to my terminal here and let's compile it array. Oh, I obviously forgot to do this. We'll say num three plus num, oops, num three plus num one. And then I can do oops, dot slash array. And you see it took five from, from num section three and three from num section one. And it said five plus three equals eight. And obviously five plus three does equal eight. So this is sort of how you can make an array of variables. And it works with any variable type. I mean, I could do char, float, doesn't matter. Um, but we'll say int for now. Um, Okay, so now we're gonna talk about strings and character sequences. So normally you guys are used to this, a char letter equals Y, right? But what if you wanna have a sentence? How do you do that? There's no variable for it in C, so we have to think a little bit outside of the box. And that's with character arrays. So let's say char string like this and we can set it equal to the dub the simple quotation marks and then we can say hello world now if you noticed i didn't put a number in this that's because what this is doing is it's automatically going to allocate you see 14 bytes because a character is only one byte each 14 characters to do hello world um a string sort of what makes it really a string is a string of characters and then a null byte at the end. A null byte is like a byte that is just zero. That signifies that that is the end of the string. So the string, you know, like if we tell printf to, you know, read a string like this, we'll tell it to read string. It's gonna start at H E L L O, you know, all the way down to the end um 
but how does it know when to stop reading the string? And that's what there's secretly a like zero at the end. There's well a way to resemble zero a zero in text is like this slash zero. This is actually what it looks like. There's gonna be a null byte at the end. Zero. And that's how it knows when to stop. So if we go and test this, compile, run. What the hell? Oh, my fault. There it is. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, I was accidentally putting a dot at the end because I suck at typing. Um, but as you can see, it printed out that string. And what it did, it, well, I mean, what it did is because we didn't put a number in here, it automatically will go and figure out how big it needs to be. Um, and it obviously figured out it needs to be 14 characters wide. So. Perfect. Um, hmm. Oh, I can show you too that if I want to, I don't know, let's print out the third character, which would be actually the fourth character because it starts at zero. And you see it printed out an L. So one, two, three, four, right? Or zero, one, two, three. And it printed out that L. If I change it to four, it's going to be an O. Boom. So you can still index the string like that, you know, you know, character by character if you want to, but that's just to demonstrate that this is still an, an array. It is an array of characters with a zero at the end. Like if I were to go percent D and go like this 13, cause I think it's, it's 14 characters long. And you see how it says zero? So we printed out the number. We wanted to convert the last character in this to its number value. Like I said, there is a zero at the end. So if I were to print the character percent C of 12, it's going to be an exclamation mark. Right? But the actual last piece of data in there is a zero to null terminate the string. That's how the that's how printf knows that that string is done there and to stop printing that array of characters. So that's just to demonstrate that. Um, I think we should talk about pointers a little bit now. Now that we've talked about arrays, we talked about them a little bit briefly before, but now we're going to go a little bit more in depth. Um, this is how you make a pointer version of a character. So we'll say char star PTR like this. Now we can set PTR equal to an address. We can set it equal to an address of something. So let's set it equal to the address of string. Um, let's just set it to the, um, let's set it to, set it to seven of index seven. Now, if I go and write another printf statement, say percent s, and I put ptr here, see how it, it's, this is pointing right now, pointer is pointing to right here, right? So that's where pointer is gonna start. It's gonna start there and then print out all the way to the end until it hits that zero. But if I were to just put in string in here, it would obviously start from the beginning. Boom, just like that. So now with that, you guys might have come to this conclusion already, but a character array is very similar, or arrays in general are very similar to pointers. So. If I wanted to set PTR equal to the address of H, I could either do it like this, or I can literally just say this, PTR equals string. Now this will set, this will automatically grab the address of the first index. So this is the same thing, like I said, as this, right? So I'll show you. This will print out the full hello world, right? 
Now if I remove this, oh, remove that again, print it like that, you see it does the same thing. Now arrays and pointers are definitely very different, but they are also very similar. Um, let's test this out with some integers. Um, I'll create int num and then I'll create a pointer version called pointer version of it called pointer and set it equal to the address of num. Okay. So what this is doing is creating num and I'll set it equal to, I don't know, five. And then it's going to create a pointer, an integer pointer and set it equal to the address of num. All right. Perfect. Um, now, if you want to print out what is in the address stored by a pointer, we'll say like this pointer equals percent D slash N and you use the star and then the pointer. So this is now going to access what's inside the address that it's holding. This is just means the address. So this is just talking about the address that it's holding. This is talking about what is inside the address that it is holding. So this will print out five. Just like that. Clear that, show you again. Perfect. Let me quickly just do that. There we go. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, I think now maybe we can talk about, hmm. Oh, I'll show you actually another example of an auto generated array with integers. So like this, you can go like that and use these brackets here. You can go one, oops, one, five, three, one, whatever. And it will automatically four. See that? Cool. So now that we talked a little bit about pointers and arrays, we're going to talk a little bit about functions. So you know what the int main function is, right? We are going to try and write our own function that we can call that does a certain thing. So we're going to write a basic one here. We'll say void my function and inside this function we can call printf and we'll just say hello world. Boom. So now if I call that function like this, it will print hello world. Like that. But this is not using functions to their full potential. So I'm going to set something up here. I'm going to create two integers. We'll say int a, uh, a equals five, b equals six. Perfect. Um, and then up here, we're going to create a function called int add number. And then it's going to take int num1 and then int num2. And I meant to make this a lowercase. Perfect. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to explain this. What this function does is it's going to take two inputs that are a number and it's gonna return a number. So for this function, I can just say return num1 plus num2, and it will simply output a number that is the addition of these two inputs. So if I call printf and say, we'll say um, percent %d plus percent %d equals percent %d, I'll put a, a B add number a B and it, this will output or return the num1 plus num2 which a becomes num1 and B becomes num2 and it's going to output that to the input of printf so I'm actually going to do this to make it a little more simpler for you guys we'll say int answer equals add number a b and then we can just put answer like that oop forgot to put a slash n cool 
Cool, so that's just the basics of how a function works. But let's mix this up a little bit. Let's say we want to save some space in memory. So what this is doing right now is it's got to allocate four bytes for integer one. It's going to allocate four bytes for integer two, right? That's eight bytes of space. But there's a method that we could cut this in half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an integer, we'll call it nums array equal to one five. So it's going to make an integer array with two numbers, one and five. And we're going to change this up here. Oops like that to int pointer num. So we're going to give it the address. We're going to get the address of this and it's going to add nums zero and oops, if I can navigate and nums one like that. So an address is only four bytes. So we took that eight bytes, the two integers and cut it in half. So now what we can do is we can say int result equals add number and just put nums because if this means just the address of nums index zero. So we're giving it the address of this and it's going to take, you know, nums zero and add it by the one that's offset or by the actually, sorry, I'll rephrase that. It's going to add it by the next number in the array. So now what I can do is I can say nums zero nums one and I'll put here result. Perfect. So I'm going to explain this one more time. First thing what we do is we create an array of integers. We pass the address of that array to this function. This function takes the first index of that array and adds it by the second index in that array and returns it. So we are, instead of giving two four byte integers, we're giving one four byte address, cutting that memory usage in half. This is just to show you guys how pointers can be useful in memory management instead of passing a a, a absolute metric shit ton of data through a function, right? There's, you can just pass an address to something. Like you don't need to have, you know, you know, int a, int b, int c, int d. You can put them into an array and simply just pass the address. Or in the next video, we'll probably talk about structs and it'll make more sense where you can pass multiple different variables and like they all get stored into what you can think of like an array, but they're called a struct. If you want to store multiple different data types, yada, yada, we'll get that, you know, get into that in the next video. But this is just a quick example of how these pointers can be used to simplify and reduce the amount of memory that your program is using. So that is all we're going to talk about today, but make sure to catch me in the next videos, guys. So I'll see you. Peace.